We're here today to talk about what might be the most obvious part of any cactus, the spines. And answering that question, why do cacti have spines? Now, the answer might seem obvious. Just one look at a plant like this Browningia hurtlingianus, and you might think, protection. They give fantastic protection against animals that might want to eat the plant. And absolutely, if you get too close to a plant like this, you're going to come away second best. However, different cacti species in different parts of the world have responded to evolutionary pressures and their spines, while providing protection, also give other benefits as well. And that's what I want to explore today. Now, yeah, this guy, fantastic spiky little bastard. Some of these plants, like Pachycereus pringleii, which grows in Mexico, will actually be covered in spines, defensive spines in their seedling stage. But by the time a plant like this, the largest of all cacti gets to full size, their branches no longer need them. And so they do away with them. All you need to do is look at the habitat plants to see nothing's eating anything quite that big. So in this video, we're gonna look at not only the defensive measures of cacti, but three other fantastic reasons that cacti have spines. Stick around and let's find out. Take, for example, this Oreocereus celsianus, the old man of the Andes. So named, of course, for the covering of white hair. Now, you can see it's covered in some fairly vicious spines itself. But amongst all that, there's this fantastic coating of what looks like wool. Now, this isn't wool. No. These are actually modified spines, these hairs. They're soft to the touch. They move about. Why the hell has this plant evolved to be covered in what looks like a layer of hair? Well, the answer might surprise you. These plants grow quite high up in the mountains in South America where the air is thinner and the protection from solar radiation is a little bit weakened. Therefore, these plants grow this thick layer of hair as a form of sun protection, protects the stems from burning. And it becomes kind of obvious when you grow these plants in cultivation, the hair is thickest where they receive the most sun. If you put this plant in a shaded position, it will grow poorly and the layer of hair upon it will be noticeably thinner. Fantastic adaptation to deal with the climate that it grows in. And of course, oh, these spines, pretty sharp as well. Also, in the mountains of South America, we have places like the Atacama Desert, where we can find species like this Copiapoa gigantea. Now, this is only a seedling. They'll grow much larger than this. And the interesting thing about the Atacama Desert is it's so dry, it almost never rains there. How does this guy get water then? Well, moisture rolls in in the form of fog across the desert. And plants typically can't access that moisture. But the fascinating thing about the spines on the Copiapoas, and indeed many other cactus species, is that they act as a point for that fog to condense. When the water droplets condense onto the spines, they roll down the body, hit the soil, and then the very shallow root system of these plants can access that moisture. Enables them to live in what's perhaps one of the most inhospitable parts of the entire planet. So spines, hey? More than just a deadly weapon. Fantastic. And the final reason cacti have spines, and I can't show you the plant itself in my collection because it's actually illegal to grow in Australia. But if we look at a plant like Cylindropuntia fulgida, the jumping chola, you might have seen it in videos all over the internet. 
These are those plants with barbed spines. They'll attach to someone's flesh. Get too close. It's almost like they've jumped off the plant and attached themselves. And then you've got to pry them off. Hideous. Source of many great moments of comedy online, however. You're thinking, what on earth is he talking about? Well, that's all about propagation. Those spines help that plant to detach from the mother plant. They attach to a passing animal, like a human or a cattle or goat or whatever it might be. They attach to the flesh and when they finally are removed, you've got another plant that can take root elsewhere. Fantastic means of clonal propagation. And so, suddenly it becomes apparent that these spines do so much more than protection. We've got protection, but we've also got as a means of sunscreen, as moisture collection and propagation. And so it reveals that these spines are a fantastic evolutionary response to some of the most difficult places on the planet within which plants can grow. I hope you learned something interesting today. See you next time. Feel free to subscribe if you like. Happy growing.